Hey, it's Chaz back with another episode of Law Have Mercy. Today's episode, I bring on the line dance king, the one and only Cupid. You know him from the Cupid Shuffle. His latest song, Flex, is blowing up nationwide. He talks about how the voice is really a scam. Stick around. It's a great episode. I know you're going to enjoy it. That's such a good song. Thanks, dude. Thank you. That's Thank such you, a man. good song. Thank you. I mean, it's infectious, <laughs> bro. Man, it's science to that song. I, I, I tell you, it's some science to that song. But uh, how'd you come up with it? During well, so during COVID, you know, we couldn't do much. So I, I had a, a little closet. I turned into a studio, and um, I was researching about harmonies and researching about like what are the most favorable sounds for people because you know. Certain sounds make you feel a certain type of way. So I started fiddling with the harmonies, fiddling with the harmonies. And I really was on some like, I'm going to make another dance record. It ain't going to have no verses. I ain't finna put any kind of like scientific words to it. We just going <laughs> to just, just flex. And um, when I finished it and they got it mixed and mastered, man, shout out to Mr. Fat. Man, that thing sound like sonically, it just does something to you. So um, we put it out August 2020. And... Made a video dancing in my backyard to it. Wow. And man. You came up with the dance as well? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I always come up with all of the dances for my songs. I actually make the songs with the dance, kind of like. So I'll make the dance up and then I'll put lyrics to to fit the dance. Um, that's super important when you're trying to make like a line dance song because, you know, you don't just want to say like jump to the right, slide, levitate, you know, <laughs> and like people don't know what to do. Um, and then too, man, there's a little kinesiology in it. Like, man, your body moves in a certain type of way. So when you make a song, naturally, if I say step to the right, the natural thing to say next or the natural direction to go is going to either be back or to the left. So it's just kind of like a science to it. And then it kind of has to feel like I make, I make music to where the, per, the most dance challenged people can still do them. You know yeah, what I mean? That'd be one of those guys. <laughs> I give you specific directions. I try not to make it too complicated. Um, because I think more people can't dance than can. So, you know, as when the people who really can't dance can get on the floor and join in, man, that's what, that's where the unity comes in. Yeah. But look, I, I see a lot of the videos that you repost from other people and it's like, look, some people kind of stiff and some people take it to a whole different level. Bruh, dude, like levels, yeah. levels, like <laughs> all the way down. Like I didn't the, think you could flex that hard. The ground, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, pelvic injuries, uh, hip injuries. <laughs> I, I didn't see them all, man, in all those videos. But it's cool to see people just adding their own like vibe to it, man, all over the world. And and I think and I think that's what makes those songs so unique is because you it has instruction, but it allows you that freedom to you know. I always give you an opportunity to get a little a little, you know. Yeah. A little body roll in there. <laughs> yeah. And while it and while it's a regional kind of sound, same with Cupid Shuffle. Mm -hmm. There's people in Japan doing this dance. Oh man, dude, it's crazy. I, I toured Japan and I the only two words I remember is kampai and um <laughs> and uh what did they say uh uh it was uh I forgot what they would say uh to leave oh, 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 me they were saying everything but I know kampai because that was sake okay. they were selling us to drink yeah that's all I remember that part but yeah they didn't understand anything I was saying but they to the right to the right to the yeah. left and it's like it's crazy phenomenon it's crazy man so. As we sit here today, like what what has Flex done, sale wise, distribution wise? Well, Flex is a different is an interesting monster because it's independent. Like with Shuffle, we we signed to Atlantic, and Atlantic, you know, really took the reins, and that's how we learned how the record business goes. But Flex is only a couple of million streams away from going gold independently, and for me, that's a big thing because I don't have anything tied to it as far as like any other entity pulling finances or we owe anybody anything to recoup. And that's one of the most spectacular things about it. And the coolest thing about it too is it's still growing. You know, there's not going to be a day where one day there's going to be a vote across America to say, let's not listen to flex anymore. Right. So it's always going to be growing. And with that, you know, um, you know, funny story. I was, I, I sang, um, at, uh, LRCA 
and I'm watching fourth and fifth graders sing flex. So you got to think that they're going to teach their kids who's going to teach their kids who's going to teach their kids. You know that old cliche like, what you know about that back in the day that we used to flex? Y'all don't know about that. So to see that song and it impact, you know, becoming like as impactful as Cupid Shuffle is, is, is crazy. And it's just, it's a testament to what we went through with Cupid Shuffle that we're able to do it again. So if my math is right, it took you four years to get to this point with Flex. And it's just now, not only has it been big, but it's just gaining real steam now. Man, it really is. And um, it took us longer to get to gold with Cupid Shuffle than it has with um, with Flex. Because Flex is only a couple of million streams away from going gold. And that's a good, that's a good gauge. But again, Flex, I don't want to say dinosaur age, but Cupid Shuffle came out in 2007. That's insane. Smartphones had just came out. Yeah. Like I had just switched from the Blackberry to a smartphone. It wasn't that smart at the time. We, you know, Facebook was still for college students. Um, MySpace was king and there was no Instagram and TikTok. Wow. So there was a slower pace to it. But with this, man, I wake up in the morning, every morning I wake up and I look at my phone and it's like, so-and-so added you as a collaborator. And like they put you like, Post this. We we did flex last night at such and such and such. So, um, it's just it's just watching it is just an amazing thing, man. Just to watch from the back your back side of it, you know. What's the process from like two thousand twenty when the song when you first dropped the song to now? How did you bootstrap it to this big? And and how did you go from? Did you start just playing it live? Did you just release it? How did you catch steam? Is what I'm trying to ask. Well, the method to the madness is the people. Um, you know, like I said during twenty twenty. Um, there was two states that were really like kind of against social distancing and uh, staying in the house, and it was Mississippi and it was Texas. So we would go perform during COVID. We perform, and there would be big trail rides outside, and people just having a good time. And um, it was that, in in conjunction with man, the the um the internet, people were home all yeah. day long doing nothing. So all they were doing was making TikTok videos, dancing. So it's like, what's the new dance? And at that time, there were a lot of musicians who weren't putting music out. So the people who were were gaining an advantage. Um, I, I, What I would do is if somebody would send me a video and it had like a lot, a lot of views, I would cash app them. I'd be like, shoot me a cash app. I sent them 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Just thank you. Like, wow. you know, I appreciate it because you don't know what you're doing for me, but you really like my promo team. So imagine you just chilling. You make a TikTok video. The artist hits you up, sends you $200. I'm making another one. Like, yeah, like, like, let me get some more of the bag and like, right. let me, and you know, and, and, um, so that built like a network of people. So I have so many people in my phone, they'll hit me up. Well, Cupid, what's up, man? We just out here chilling. They'll be FaceTiming and it's cool. So that's what it was, was the, like, I was able to connect directly with the people during COVID. And, um, those, these four years is what's made flex what it is. And all the other things that I've been putting up, um, afterward is because, you know, people are anticipating it and they know they can reach out to me direct. Yeah. Well, how critical is the actual dance to songs like Cupid Shuffle and Flex? How critical is the dance to the actual success of the song? So when I started calling myself the line dance king, um, it was because there was a song, uh, Cha Cha Slide, right, by Mr. C. Uh, Casper, right? So Casper, he passed away last year. And a lot of people don't even know that. A lot of people don't even know that he made the song because he really didn't stand on his process. Um I feel like I'm creating a genre of music. Not, not creating it, but being an advocate for it because there is songs like Achy Breaky Heart that have a line dance to it, but it's not a line dance song. Like you can listen to Achy Breaky Heart, there's no instruction. There's nothing that's telling you this is what this song's purpose is. There's songs like the Cha Cha Slide that's specifically telling you one hop was time, two hops this time, slide, so on and so forth. So the biggest thing about it is that in order for it to be a line dance song, it has to have that dance element. That is just imperative to it. And, um, you know, you you have people who like strike lightning where, boom, uh, they'll make a song and somebody will put a line dance to it or whatever. But for what I do, it's like the most important part. And that's one of the keys to why I'm one of the only people that can do that because a lot of people don't understand that science. I've had people come up to me, ask me to, for, for the formula. I've had labels ask me, hey, how do you such and such? I'm like, I can't tell you. I could just do it. Because 
as an independent, I can't give away the secret sauce because then it'll be a million of me. Right. But there's a science to it, and it's probably the most important. It's the key is to have a dance incorporating with the um with the song, no doubt. Because people tie the good time that they had somewhere with that song, with that good feeling, and it, it brings back memories probably, it, I would assume. It does. And, you know, it's funny because with radio, you know, you listen to the radio and you hear a song 100 million times. But the reason why Cupid Shuffle and Flex and songs like that have so much longevity is you only hear it during these festive times. The times you hear it are times that have good energy involved. Like you don't hear, you know, you're not going, I mean, and I don't want to use this as like, it might be a bad example, but you don't hear Cupid Shuffle at a lot of funerals. <laughs> you don't hear it at a lot of like, you know, two dudes getting in a fight in the club when no. Shuffle came on. No. That's not. The two dudes are going to stop fighting and start shuffling. Yeah. That's the case, yeah. Right? <laughs> it, it don't have that kind of vibe. So, you know, I've always been an advocate to make positive popular. And I think because my music is, it reflects such good times. It's why it never gets old. Like certain songs, you're like, I don't want to hear this song again. Oh my God. Right. This plays all the time on the radio. And then it kind of like goes away. But with Shuffle, when you hear it, instinctly you just kind of like oh what a party oh yeah and flex is this, is becoming the same way so um that's what i think is another aspect of why my music does so well is just because it it reminds you of those kind of kind of times and that kind of feeling at any point in your career early on after the cupid shuffle took fire and you were putting out music did you ever try to pull back from line dance and say i i, I don't want to be known for that did you have that moment Absolutely, bro. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it was so bad. I messed around and went on doggone voice. But you see, and this this is this is gonna be deep, like, but a lot of times what we do, we'll pray for something and you'll get it, and then you try to play pray past it. So I I was like, look, I just want to be able to do music for the rest of my life. God, let this shuffle thing blow up. Boom, I get a record deal. This was December 21st. I had that specific little prayer. And then January um, 3rd is when I got my first label call of 2007. It's 2006, 2007, right? Now, the world has a weird way of, like, trying to make you switch up what's working. <laughs> they won't tell you, oh, it's working. I hate it. They'll say, nah, try something else. Because, you know, you're cool at this. But, nah, you really might be good at this. And it's humans. It's, it, it's, it's just it's weird. So it's kind of like, yeah, Cupid, you making these dance songs. Yeah, whatever. But you really can sing. Why don't you sing ballads? And I'm like, I could sing ballads all day. I used to sing them in talent shows when I was a kid. But that ain't what the lane that was carved out for me. So, um, you know, yes, there was like when I, the label was getting in my ear, trying to get me to do all kind of stuff. So I'm like, yo, I sing so good. I can out sing anybody. Like, this ain't no talent show. And I got a song that's carving its way through American culture. And I'm kind of like, yeah, that's cool. But let me do this. Just because people, and bro, I hate the word people. I Like, that's a word that I hate. Because who consists in the category of people? Like, when people are like, man, people say you need to wear a green shirt. Right. Who's Who are you talking about? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And, um. I let that get to me at a point in my career, man. And it really almost broke me. And the turning point was when I went on the voice. Uh, and that, and that, that was kind of like, you know, a slap, like, like the universe slapping me in the face. Like you better get it together. Like before I take all of this from you. Yeah. So that was big for me. And, um, but, but look, I can't, I can't blame you. You get an opportunity to be on NBC primetime television, the voice, who could say no to that? But then the next day I was donkey of the day on the breakfast club. I was on every blog, complete called a complete idiot. How did that come about? Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, so during season one of the voice, there was a guy by the name of Javier Colon and he won the voice. He was signed to Capitol. So instinctively I said, well, man, this is my opportunity to go and sing. I was signed to Atlantic. I had, I was off the label at the time and I got the email so I thought it was cool. Like, I was like, okay, cool. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to go over there and sing. These kids can, you know what I mean? Right. So I go and it's just, it's a fiasco. It's like crazy watching these kids stick their finger in their mouth, throwing up to not gain weight so they could fit an outfit, not going to sleep. And then it was crazy because when you get to the voice, they set you up, they give you a roommate. 
You don't know these people from a, the man and the moon. <laughs> and they take, they, at the time, they would take your cell phones. It's so, like gaslighting. So you're there for like two weeks in a room with a person. And basically, they, they're like, hey, if, if so-and-so does something, let us know. So you got people going against each other trying to get them kicked off the show. And I'm talking about young adolescent kids. I'm older at the time, so I'm just looking at the craziness. Um, we get there. Yeah, you're a man at this time. Oh, yeah, I, I got a hit record. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm I basically going on the show just the same. That's right. that's my thing. Get on there, man. And they were like, fortunately, I snuck my phone in because I was contacting my attorney. I was like, ah, what's going on? Get the contracts. They were like, okay, cool. You can be on The Voice. Here's what you do. Blah, 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 blah. But... You know, if you make it, we own your catalog forward and backward. And I'm like, <laughs> so they they get everybody together. But, all, but most people don't have much to lose at this point, oh, right? Oh, no, bro. They're nothing kids. to lose. You, you, can have had, it all. you had stuff already in the pipeline. You already had the Cupid Shuffle. You had a lot to lose. You can have it all. And uh, they so this is what they do. They put all the kids, oh, everybody in a room, and they bring three lawyers out. The three lawyers, they sit there and they say, okay, make your presentation of why this lawyer should represent the group. Now, mind you, you got 200 people in a room. Nobody, like the guy's like, hi, I'm so-and-so, um, I'm from so-and-so, da 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 I love pop music, blah, 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 thank you. <laughs> right? And I'm sitting back like, this is crazy. So, naturally, all three of them work for The Voice. It's just basically pick one of these guys. They, then they say at the end of the meeting, they say, there's a guy in here with a record, um, Cupid Shuffle. Where is he? I'm like, me? Pull me in the bag. So, yeah, we want to talk about, you know, with this catalog, with this song, you know, uh, forward and backward, you know. But, hey, but, hey, we can get you on the show. And I'm like, texting my manager, like, I mean, my uh, lawyer, like, no, no way. So, long story short, the contracts come out. I don't sign mine. Blind auditions come up. They like, are you going to sign? You going to sign? I'm like, ah. We still got to negotiate this. Everything is negotiable. I want to be on the show. I want to sing. But this backward part, no, nah, we're not doing that. I get on there, and in my mind, yo, I had practiced two songs. Because, mind you, you practice with the band. Like, the whole thing with the thing is the, the band is not, like, uh, like, random. And they had licensed Cupid Shuffle, so I had already got paid for that, which was crazy. So nothing's I'm, random. It's all I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to sing Marvin Gaye. Right. Because that was the song I practiced. But they told me practice Cupid Shuffle just in, for when I get for later in the show. Just in case. Just in case. And then to make matters worse, they're interviewing me and they're asking me, hey, are you? Uh, a? <laughs> uh, so how do you feel if you don't make it, you know, to the next to the voice? What happen? I'm like, I got a show next week, <laughs> you know, and they're taking bits and pieces of it to create this whole sadness story. Right. I get on there, man. I start singing Shuffle. Y'all, you got to know that it's my song. Right. There's no other way it can sound but the real way. You know, if, we, if, if Whitney Houston's on The Voice and she sings, you know, her song, you can't be like, oh, nah. How does No Chair Turn Around? Right. Right. It makes no sense. And and like would would any other artist pick the Cupid Shuffle? No offense to the Cupid Shuffle, yeah. right? Yeah. But would any artist pick that to show their range? That right. part. So I'm on there though. Man, Chance, I'm Zoddy coin. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm hitting notes. Uh, I'm going crazy. Right. No chairs turn around. Right. At that moment, man, that was the moment. And we're talking about what you were saying when I realized, man, I disrespected my blessing. I came on here and I really made it look like I didn't want to about this song. And then CeeLo. You felt played. Huh? Oh, I want to fight. Yeah. <laughs> I want to fight. Right. Like. And CeeLo, I looked directly at CeeLo, and he looked at me. He said, Cupid, what you doing here? I'm right. Like, I'm like, yo, man, I just I just want to you know, show people I can sing. And so he did the ultimate greatest thing ever. He said, sing something else. Wow. And that's when I sung Marvin Gaye. And Was that aired? Yeah. 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 And um, basically, it, you know, he basically, he, he, they knew what was he going knew. on. He knew. But he was kind of like, I'm going to give you this opportunity to do what you came to do. Got on the plane, left. And um, after that, man, I never, ever, ever, ever talked down about Cupid Shuffle again. Wow. Ever. It took that moment to realize the blessing you had and appreciate it. And also, like, you got a glimpse behind the curtain and you realize, like, it's all fake and phony and. TV's TV. TV's TV. You know. And, um, yeah. But that was, that was, the, that was the day. 
You know, like I got on a plane and flew to Vegas to perform with Stevie Wonder the next day. Yeah. So it was like. Did the, it, did the appearance help uh, streams or downloads or any of that stuff? It definitely did. But again, it was so much negativity. Like they, they spun it like I was an idiot. Why would I? Like I chose the song. Yeah. Um, People stopping being Walmart. Like, man, why would you do that? That's dumb. You know, I, I cut the comments off. I, I started ra- reading the comments. And then, Man. of course, with the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne, the guy's like, yo, Donkey of the Day, Cupid, da 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 And that that was tough. Like, 2012, bro. This, this I mean, it's 2024 now. This 12 years ago. A lot of people, I didn't know how to handle that. Like, I wouldn't come out the house. Really? And, I, you know, all I wanted to do was CrossFit. I was like, I don't want to talk about music. Yeah. All I want to do is work out and just be away from it all because that was, like, the most embarrassing there's a difference between falling in the grocery store and doing something like that in front of millions of people like eight million people watched that show that night yeah you know so uh shout out to jeremy that's probably where we met at raging cross yeah, it is. Time. It raging is, fitness man. now yeah man from my from my hood they, they, you know me and jeremy used to play outside man his grandma used to live across the street from us in the hood so that's my boy man that's that's my that is my boy man got love for jeremy all day jeremy's awesome oh yeah so, so I went to The Voice, nobody turned around, and the next day I flew to Vegas and had a show with Stevie Wonder. I think you really won that deal. Yeah, man, the Steve Harvey Neighborhood Awards. Yeah, and um, it, it opened my eyes, it opened my eyes. What is uh, Cupid Shuffle today? Like, what, is it still streaming? Is it still going? How, what does that mean for you today? Been in the top 200 download stream, streamers for 20 years. Oh, that's insane. The number one played uh, so- wedding song in the country. Number one. It, it, did, it, did it pass Earth, Wind, and Fire? It Journey. Wow. Don't, Don't stop believing. I, um, I use Journey all the time because when I talk to my team and different people about the difference between amateurs and professionals, okay? So I consider myself a professional. And professionals do things that they don't want to do. And so I always say, you think Journey feels like don't pl- that plane don't stop believing every night? But they do because they're professionals. And I know you handle your business the same way. Do yeah. you ever get tired of playing the Cupid Shuffle? Never. Never. Because I know what the reaction is going to be. I know with all of the stories and the things that I've been through, I know what it is. And to me, it's the foundation of the, of the, the empire I've built. You know, every artist has... A great, a best song. Every artist has a best song. Your fans might know all your B sides, but every artist has a best song. So if you run away from your best song, it makes no sense. Like I mean, I'm talking about like I'm a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan to the end of me, and you can't tell me nothing about Under the Bridge. You can't tell me nothing about Under the Bridge. Nothing you can tell me. One of my first CDs ever, man. Bro, like you know, you talk about TLC, and we gonna talk about Creep. I don't. Waterfalls might fight it too, but just song like artists like that. So. You know, journey. I'm sure at the end of the night they like, man, this the one that paid, that bought the boat. This the one that pays the bill right here. It's just a small town guy. It's <laughs> right into it. Let's go. You and, know, and you handle yourself. If you're playing to a group of fourth graders for free, volunteer, you get to sing it with the same passion you will a pack stadium. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, the Michael Jordan effect, right? You know, a lot of people don't get an opportunity to do what they love to do for a career, and I think that's where. You know, I tell my son that all the time. And one day he was like, uh, Dad, I was like, what you want to do? He's like, I think I want to be an engineer. I was like, no, you don't. You don't do in, anything engineering <laughs> in this house. You don't build. I don't see no Legos. I don't see. You don't do anything engineering. I don't like math. You know, yeah, we fighting with math. I got to get a tutor. But what do you like to do? So you're like, you know, I like to shoot ball. I was like, well, how about maybe going into sports medicine? You know, you had an injury, you know, how about learning about that? How about going into opening your, your a training facility? How about going into coaching? I was like, because, son, I'm telling you, one day you're going to say, you don't want to ever say, I hate my job. I I, I did that, you know? And um, so, yeah, like, I think it's important, man. Like, that's why I sing the way I sing, because, man, I, how can you, like, I wake up in the morning and sing songs. Yeah. You know, I used to work at a call center. Right. You know, we're taking calls for seat, for singular wireless, <laughs> bro. Like that was whack. You know, perspective, right? I, was, I worked, dude. I promise you, I promise you. It's one, two, three. It's a bunch of people in here. I had more jobs than all y'all put together in my life. 
I would just get fired or just quit because I could, it's like I don't want to. I would do it because I had to, but I didn't want to. And when I finally figured out, like like singing, oh man, you are gonna get the best of me every time. Yeah. Well, I know you're such a passionate father. How do you balance the touring, the recording, being a super present dad that you are? How do you balance that? Um, it's I, I do it with love. Love is the key to that, man. Because I love my family. I love I love my kids. I love music. So everything that I do. Uh, it, it it doesn't get tiring until it's time to go to time to you know you have your times but I enjoy doing music. The balance is basically, you know, I can't do music if the, my family's not good, but I can't do my family stuff if my music's not good. Um, you know, my wife she's she, she's awesome. Like as far as like saying hey, it's eight o'clock you can put that phone down now, things like that. And with my kids, man, I realize. You know, um, that I only got one shot at raising these dudes, you know, so I can't I can't drop the ball on that. You know, I'm I'm I ran track in college, you know, I played football and ran track in high school. So I love sports. So even if they you know, my my little guy, he he likes um he likes to sing. He can he can really sing. And he um he's into like the um the arts school and stuff, um, CYT and all that, uh, and all of that. Just got to be present, man, because you don't. You know, you just don't get that time back. And when me and my my boy, Mr. Fat, producer, man, like like my best friend, man, we talk about the most precious, the most valuable element in this world is time. You know, it's the only thing you can't buy, you know. And so, so spending time with them is like my getaway from music. And music is my getaway from them sometimes. So yeah. I, I put it right there in the middle. And it always works out. Yeah. You know, I just heard Steve Harvey say something real crazy one day. He was like, yeah, you know, people with money don't sleep. And I was like, and they don't live long either. Like, you got to be in a balance. All of them things, man. You got to rest. You got to have that family leisure time. And you got to have your work time. Because if you put too much in, in, into one, the other one's going to lack. And I think I've found a, been able to find an interesting balance with that, man. That's been help, you know, keeping me young, running around them kids, keeping me young on the stage. And still being able to be an old man and just sit back and kick my shoes off and yeah. watch them cut up, you know. Well, you you've had issues with stress and and creeping up on you and affecting yeah. your health, right? Stroke, man. Twenty seventeen, had a stroke. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that was uh, you know, I was going through it, man, and um, I was going through it, and I I thought I was, I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a stress eater. Believe it or not, man. Like if I'm stressing, man, I'm going straight to that cabinet. If I'm not right. busy, I'm just kind of doing that and. It caught up with me, man. Caught a stroke, man. Uh, July. It was uh, in July of uh, 2017, and way too young to have a stroke, bro. It was the scariest thing of my life. Like, I mean, like lost like 80 percent of my 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 arm was just hanging, and I and it was crazy. I had shows booked up, and uh, so I lip sing. Wow. Every last show. Kind of flopped your arm around. Didn't move. <laughs> I didn't move. Arm just there, bro. And then I started. What happened was I started. We can having, laugh about it now. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 man. No, it's all good. <laughs> and then, man, what it it ended ended up hurting this this show the big because I I was I was off, man, and it was for anybody who's a stroke survivor, you you know, like when you can't say when you you know you, you can't you, your tongue and you you can't talk. So I thought I was done with music, man, and um you know through the grace of God and just you know figuring it out. You know, that, again, the gym helps. The gym helps save my life, man. Cause I, um, cause one thing about that, I, you know, at the time I, you know, was going through the divorce situation, and I didn't have many friends. So, going to the gym was like where I found a, another, like a family of friends who would like who were all trying to push, you know, for the for the for the greater good of your body, and it was just a good place socially for me, man. So. You know, that's why I say Jay, my boy, man, because like that place saved my life genuinely. I mean, I found, I went from a stroke to trying to so say compete, so say compete, you know, but it, yeah. You like, did. You get after it, man. Oh, man. It was, man, you know, for an old man, it was, it, I was trying to do my thing. Yeah. You know? I, I, that's the way I cope with stress. I always got, I mean, we're at the ballpark every single night and that's after a long day. Right. Yeah. And, and, and every single client is my boss. I have hundreds of bosses. Right. And so. I run, I run or I work out and I have to, I think I work out seven days a week at yeah, some point, even yeah. if it's just a, a four or five mile walk, I have to do it because that's my outlet because yeah. it will, stress will eat you up. 
and I and I could feel it in my midsection, bro. You know, you know, that's, you that's where you get it. I get it right here, my neck. Why <laughs> neck? neck, bro? I'll be sitting down and feel like my neck about to like like it's it's the weird. Like you thing. feel fat in your face, or is it just? Oh, look, if, if this little part gets to going down, like oh yeah. uh-uh, man, we got to yeah. I need to get some burpees, tighten it up, <laughs> some Tied double thunders, something for sure. Yep. So another thing, like. You and I have had so many good talks, and and I was talking to you one time. I said, "Q, why you don't play more like big festivals around here, Lafayette? Like, why you don't play Festival International? How can you go play French Quarter Fest and all these places, and you don't play right here in your hometown?" And I think that you're a cultural ambassador, both in what you do philanthropy wise, and just being like you always put Lafayette on your videos are filmed in Lafayette, like. Why aren't you playing more places here? So there's two sides to that. The first side I'm going to say is, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that you could probably see me at your local Walmart or Target or Dollar Tree, like, at random times. And I think a lot of that has to do with my familiarity and longevity. Like, most of the people that's on the festival board, I was doing Cupid Shuffle when they went high school. Right. You know what I mean? And, you know, I've been at it so long. Sometimes it's kind of like, all right, Cupid, yeah, it's cool. Now, I would love the opportunity to be able to do at least one. But there's another another part to it that's like, you know, they say, you know, a prophet may not not be, you know, welcomed in his own town. Um, Not to say that I'm a prophet by any means, but I just feel that sometimes you get more love out of town, you know, um, I feel, to be completely honest, I'm going to play it. Like, it's going to get to a point where whoever the powers that be that are there aren't going to be there. And somebody's going to take, you know, the realm and be like, oh, you know, he has it. You know, we're going to run out of people at some point. And when they do, I'm going to make it the most memorable show ever. But um, what I had to learn is that, you know, there's a hundred million other festivals. Yeah. And... I look at the times I go to these schools and the times that I go to these other places as festivals as well. Yeah, it might not be 10,000 people in Park International, but I'm impacting these people the same way. So my 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 presence here isn't based on how many festivals I do. You know, when I do these schools, I don't go to the media. I don't say, oh, come, you know, cover this. I just do them just because I want to do them. You know, they see the smiles on the community's face and I donate money. I do a lot of stuff. I never, ever, ever, ever say who to where and why. So my presence here is felt, you know, you know, if I can't make them book me, um, but eventually it's going to happen. And until then, man, look, if you, if, you know, if you, if, if you really want to see me, just come pull up two hours away, you yeah. know, I'll be at French Quarter, I'll be at jazz. I'll be at, you know, these other ones. And, um, you know, it's gone. It, it's, it's all good. Like I used to be real, bitter about it because there was some little things that happened back in the past that just you know but i was like well, I, it was probably like a sliding cups with the like guess where the ball is on the cups like you probably get different excuses why uh, you could well you'd bring uh, a wrong crowd well you did this it well was, it was that one it was the and then you see the jamaican band pull up and you're like well, wait a second i thought here's the worst right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you the part that makes me that made me the word the maddest the a more mark maddest not word i'm more the most upset Hearing cover bands play Cupid Shuffle <laughs> at festival, that was the part. I'm out there with my spinach bowl. I can't play it. I can't play it, so I'm just going to go out and hang out. I got my spinach bowl. To the right, to the wait. To the right, wait. Yeah. Every, every, and I'm like, I don't get it. Right. But that flex pressure is kicking in. Right yes. Now. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, right. it's going to get to a point where like, okay, hey, I mean, cause they used to, I used to have a, a um, there was a, a promoter. I ain't going to say his name, <laughs> but it was this one guy who would always try to book me for the Cajun Heartland State Fair. And he would always try to say, well, Hey man, you got one song. Right. And I'd be like, but how many songs the Molly Ringwalls got? Right. How many songs <laughs> the Chiwis got? 
They other people's songs. You can't base, you can't right. do, but it was that that mental thing of like, you got one song, so that's why we're not going to do it. Or that's why we're not really going to pay you that or, much. Or how many songs is the Moroccan band that nobody ever heard of here? Man, have? right. All right, because I can't understand a word they're saying, but, but they're, it's entertaining. But yeah. Cube is also entertaining, and he's probably going to bring some artists from everywhere Absolutely. and put on an amazing show. But no, Absolutely. let's get the bag of donuts for the eighth time. Yeah, yeah th exactly. I'm so sorry. I'm so, no you know, offense to the and bag I, of donuts. And I love donuts, man. They cool, but they they know they, they, and, they and, know and, their deal. And yeah. we've, con we've had conversations with, I've had conversations with them where they're like, man, we don't get it either, but it's all good. At the end of the day, I'm, it's, it's going to all work itself out. But for me, that was the part that broke me the most was hearing cover bands sing Cupid Shuffle at the festival. Cause then I'm starting to feel that is hilarious. Like it's toward me. Yeah. And um, again, you can't make people. You can't make people book you. You can't. You know, force your way up there. I'm gonna let the chips fall where they may. Keep dropping hits to where it's kind of like, okay, we yeah. gotta get them. Cause one thing's for certain. Two things for sure. If when I get on that stage, oh, yeah, it's all. Oh, it's gonna. Oh, oh, you gonna have to get you get your cameras out. Cause I don't think yeah. I'm gonna bring everybody. I might try to. Who knows? I might. Who know what artists I might try to pull on stage with me? And it's only the big stage, right? You have to say no. To uh, yeah, I'm not doing nothing. You, can, you have to say no to every no, other yeah, stage yeah, of the big yeah. stage. Yeah, absolutely. Prime time. Yeah, I got a prime time right before the sun go down. I need the horizon time. Whatever, if it's daylight savings, I need horizon time. That's yeah. when we need to be up there, man. And uh, That's party time. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I'm the very first person to shoot a music video at Park International. I shot Cupid Shuffle there in 2007. So that place was just the place like i mean of course it's what it is but you know my goal has always been to put lafayette on the map like you don't see me saying i'm from you know people new I'm, orleans I'm, I'm, you from, could, I'm from lafayette mama. right right i'm right sure you could easily say new orleans like some other people you never easily. said that but yeah. no man i'm here so so it's gonna happen man and um i just figured all the outside work that i do is gonna eventually make it happen yeah so yeah. you have something else coming on the horizon oh, I yeah i do that might get you there I think that's my company, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Tell us about that. So um, I just signed a, a, a major deal with APG. Um, I have a song called The Down South Shuffle that's coming out. It's a country song. I was approached, with, I was approached four months ago about this song, not knowing that Beyonce was going to decide to put on a cowboy hat. I was going to ask you about I that. I had no idea, bro, <laughs> at all. And um, I'm like, this is cool, but... In the song, they kind of do like a, a interpolation of Cupid Shuffle. So they were like, this could be the Cupid Shuffle down to uh, Cupid Shuffle part two, excuse me. Of course, they had a writer somewhere, wherever he was, and he sent me the song halfway done. So I had to fix it and make it right so it could be a line dance song. Did the song and uh, it'll be released on the 27th of uh, of uh, March. But, um, you know, this is. Like, Flex is the biggest line dance song in the country clubs right now. I mean, I got the videos to prove it. You it has a it's so crazy. It is crazy. I've seen some, yeah. And, and um, so to have this and then have the machine behind it is going to be big for me, you know, to stamp myself as the line dance king. And and I feel like getting into doors that I haven't been able to get in in the past. What is what is the appeal with country music to some of the R&B artists or even a rap artist? Like, what's the appeal of country music? Well, I, I feel like in Southwest Louisiana, there's two type, types of country music. There's traditional country, and then there's what I would consider like an urban country. And I think that would be kind of like the Zodico, like the Chris Arduans, the, the Keith Franks, the, the the Lil Nates, you know, the Leon Chavises of the world. And I think that, that they, you know, it's the same element. It's the, it's the whole outdoor cowboy, you know, kind of vibe. It's just two different sounds. And let's be honest. You got hip-hop rap. You have... You know, gangster rap, you got gospel rap, you got all these different type of derivatives of rap. You got swamp pop, you got pop, you got K-pop, you got all of these things. So I feel like country music is is eventually going to have like certain derivatives. Um, but with country music, man, it's, it's kind of like, truthfully, between, I'd say, uh, it's like I... I don't know what the numbers are and I don't want to get killed for this on saying this on a podcast, but I think country music might be bigger than hip hop. I definitely know ticket sale wise. They are right now. I think so. You know, because of course hip hop isn't really, that's a whole nother conversation with the labels and how they've done with that. The, 
the, the, the lack of work they've done to keep that genre strong. So naturally people are going to, going to go and say, Oh, what's, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Beyonce is from Houston. And last year I performed with Bun B at the Houston rodeo for his Bun B takeover. And I'm going to tell you, I've never performed in front of 75,000 people with hats, cowboy hats on of all different races and genres. I'm up there with him, with juvenile. He brings out Erica Badu. It's, It's just crazy. So, we can't pigeonhole it um, as far as what country music should sound like, but I do feel that um, I do think that there's going to be room for derivatives and growth in it, you know. But shout out to the country music artists for, you know, for laying down the foundation. You know, I'm learning a lot about it. And this is my first, I'm just doing a line dance record in that genre. So hopefully it goes well. But country music is something serious, man. I, I see them numbers Garth and be doing and all them people. And that's great. Are you excited about country music? Do you like country music? I do. I do. I actually do. But I'm a fan of just music music. Yeah. Like, I listen to the weirdest stuff. Like, I just was on the, I was coming on the way here talking to Dolby D on the phone. I was telling them, talking about, we were talking about Jamiroquai this morning. Just wow. random. But, man, I love Jamiroquai. Yeah. Hall and Oates. Um, uh, the Bee Gees. Yeah. Then I switch over to PJ Martin. Then I might switch over to juvenile then i might switch over to chili peppers right. then i might switch like i just think music is music yeah you know what i mean like i could I, it's just music so i'm excited about the country world because i feel like cupid shuffle has been so dominant in those country clubs and flex is becoming so dominant it's like i want to say hi i want people to know like hey it's me bad enough most people don't even know how i look across the country they know my music but they don't know me because i'm not one of those attention getters to where i'm doing everything to be like hey this is who i am but i want to do the nashville's i want to do the chattanoogas i want to do the boise idaho's and the and i want to open up for the the big artists and be on those stages you know those are things i haven't done it sounds like it'd be a natural fit because line dancing is so important in the in the country community right and here you are the line dance king let's get it I think it's gonna work. Yeah. I, I know. I, I know it's gonna work, and I'm just excited, man. I've been, I've been finding some jeans <laughs> that's a little tighter, right? You know, working, doing my squats. I'm about to help you out with doing that. my squats, man, and uh, you know, making sure that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I can get my clothes from Express, because <laughs> you know, if you're a certain size, you ain't shopping at Express, bro. right? It ain't right. happening. I trust me, I know. Right. I was. I lived it. So I'm getting ready, getting my attire ready, because I know it's gonna be big, man. Well, don't start running like me, because you'll lose your ass. That's the problem. Hey, man, my wife. Stay with the squad. She ain't gonna like that, man. That's <laughs> that's the leg day queen. She writes. She's a trainer. Right. So she writes my workouts every day. First thing I see, like twenty curtsy lunges. I'm like, why? <laughs> I just want to be a dude. Let me bench. Got to get them glutes <laughs> Let me up. Bench and do some some crunches, but you know. So just just to be clear, and those at home who are watching can see this on the screen, but. Uh, in North America, according to primesound.org, hip hop rap is the leading genre in the United States and Canada, followed by pop and rock. Though country music enjoys considerable popularity in the southern and midwestern regions of the United States. That is but wild. people like Morgan Wallen are kind of also like bridging that gap between almost like hip hop and country. Yes, man. Yes. And I just my 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 prayer for that whole thing is that it just doesn't get out of hand. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I don't think the country music people are gonna let it. The power right. that be is not letting anybody just rap, right? You know, pop that twerk on, <laughs> on a country song. Like right. it's gonna be monitored. So, um, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, man, it's it's just cool to see where music is going, man. It's yeah. crazy. Well, the problem with country music is you might have to play some more smaller rodeos, mm-hmm. and you gotta watch out for stray bulls. Oh, bro. Wait, yeah, yeah. Can we talk yeah. about this? Like yeah, <laughs> Carter, need the video. <laughs> what year was this? Oh, 2016, bro. Have you ever seen this? Okay, so Cupid is performing yeah, at a rodeo. Where, where is this? Houston? It's in Humble, Texas. Humble, oh, Texas. Oh, you see him? Jump, okay. o- jump over the barricade. So there's a bull, runs out. 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. Dude, I'm glad you ran track. 4-2. That was a tremendous start. So a bull gets loose from the stall, jumps yeah. over, and some for some reason you look behind you. And narrowly missed it. It narrowly missed you. Here we go. Here and we then go. you sprint to the hey, wall. Like, is this from TMZ? Yeah. There you come. What Ooh. made you look behind? If you don't look behind, you're dead. Man. <laughs> 
what made me look behind was that the crowd was cheering. Yeah. And then I heard him go, yeah. And, and you- when I heard it, I, 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 like, you know, peripheral, and I just saw, like, it coming. Yeah. And, um, man. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, does he have a case? And the answer would be yes, if the bull hits him, right? But also, did he injure himself once he had to run, if he pulls a hamstring or if he jumps in on the fence and hurts himself? Also, yes, because he was doing that to avoid a tremendous catastrophe that would be the bull Man. horn in your back. Man. There's only one thing, though. Does the venue have proper insurance? And does the promoter have proper insurance? And I think in most situations, the answer to something that size is probably not. Yeah, definitely didn't have insurance at all. Um, it was a fight. It was a fight. I ended up kind of getting a little money from that situation, but the promoter laughed it off. Right. He was like, oh, man, that's crazy. Ha, ha, ha. Man, well, I'm glad you're good. Well, I actually fractured my shoulder. Wow. Because what you don't see is when I ran, there was a fence about maybe 10 feet high. I jumped and grabbed the top of the fence, and I had no idea if the bull was behind me or not, and just flipped myself over. Yeah. And I landed on my on my head, like on a big old thing of chairs, and landed in, um, at a, you know, where adrenaline was pumping. I ended up going back out there and doing the show. Wow. Yeah. So the, the the answer is, does he have a case? The question is, does he have a case? The answer is definitely, right? Because you have a duty to protect the entertainers, just like you have a duty to protect the patrons and the, the guests there, right? And we saw that during the Travis Scott situation. Yeah. Even Travis Scott got sued and that whole deal. So uh, that's kind of a cautionary tale to make sure, like, wherever you play, I want to see that insurance. Like, yeah. I'm going to be that dude that asked for the insurance. Yeah, right? yeah, man. And I, after that, I stopped doing, like, clubs. And when I do rodeos, I don't get out the truck. I stay in the little truck thing. Um, but because of that, like, you know, you get in these situations where you may do a concert at a place and it's a club, a nightclub or an event center, and something happens that has absolutely nothing to do with you. But if you're on that microphone, they can get you for enticing a riot. I mean, you could be singing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Yeah. But if that riot gets going, you know, you can be held liable. And you got to make sure that those people have event insurances, which a lot of them don't. You they know? don't. So uh, I, um, nah, I, learned, I learned a valuable lesson from that. And you're right, man. I did have a case. I didn't think so at first because he kind of like, no, nah, man, you know, well, the bull didn't hit you. Right. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I should have just stood there. Yeah. Your 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 injury from the from the from the gate or the fence jumping it, but for the bull running at you, you would not have suffered that injury. Exactly. Right. And so there is the causation there, no doubt. Um, I think if the bull hits you, it's a traumatic case. Oh, it's a well into the seven figure case. Uh, problem is, you got to have insurance, and these people don't all have insurance. Yeah, and I mean. You know, and, and okay, I have a question for you. Like, if a person doesn't have insurance, yeah, and let's per se, I got hit, right? Yeah. Then, then how do you, what happens? Chances are they probably have an LLC. And mm-hmm. so you, you can sue them personally, but you're limited to the assets of the LLC, That's right? Tough. And then you got to try to break through that LLC and sue them personally and say that LLC really wasn't valid because they didn't do X, Y, Z. It wasn't in good standing, which is a dogfight in itself. And then when you break all the way through that and I say, Cupid, your case is worth three and a half million dollars. How much money do you think that promoter has? That part. How much, how much money do you think that promoter has in his bank account? That part. And you could be like, "Mm, I would be surprised if he has $5,000 in the savings account. Yeah. Right. And not, not, not to pick on that promoter no, no, or any no, other no, promoter. No, I'm just saying, just honest. Yeah. like most no. people that like when we, when we value cases, we look at the amount of insurance because most people ain't got money. That's true. Most people ain't got money. And then, and then even if they do have money, they can file bankruptcy. Right. You got a big judgment against them. They could just file bankruptcy. That's wild. It is wild. Well, Cuban man, you've been very, uh, cool with your time. Oh, you man. answered a bunch of questions, my man. Where can people find you? I'm always on Instagram, always, until I got to turn my phone off. And my official new Cupid on Instagram, 
um, official New Cupid on TikTok, and I'm New Cupid on X, but I barely use that. And Cupid with the blue check on a on Facebook. If it don't have the blue check, then it's not me because somebody's gonna ask y'all for some money. <laughs> Bitcoin, join Bitcoin yeah, uh, like, mastermind. Like, I had one of my homegirls, she was like, hey, is this you? And she screenshot and he was like, hi, beautiful, how are you? <laughs> Hope today's well. I love that you're my fan. And she and So she commented in her, in her best Lafayette voice, boy, that's not cute. <laughs> that's not cute, boy, I know him personally. So yeah, make sure it's verified, make sure it's me. But I'm always on social media. Um, I want to encourage everybody who's watching, man, anytime you make a video, tag me on it. Like dancing to any of my music because um I love to see it. I love to repost the good ones. And um that's how we build that community and that connectivity is by reaching out to me. I show y'all love back and uh we can continue to make this music continue to grow. You talk about God works in mysterious ways. We were at a Mexican restaurant here in Lafayette and Flex came on and Beth turned to me and said, You need to get Cupid on the show. And the next morning, you texted me and said, Chaz, I want to come on the show. And I said, I got goosebumps telling that story. I yeah. was like, you would not believe this. Man, I was watching I was watching your content. And kudos to you, man, because uh, this little quick story, man. You've been my boy from the gym doing them wall balls. <laughs> it's crazy. And then, at, like, again, my one of my lowest points, man, you came to me and directed me to somebody who really benefited everything that I was trying to do. You know, the guy, you, you directed me to the goat and she took care of me, man. But um, I want to thank you for that, man. And just always being a hundred. We we did. I still rock the T-shirt you gave me. You know, um, and we, we what else we did? We did something well, else. You're in luck. I got another. Oh, one. oh, hey. See, these, I hope you like blue. Hey, these work. These shirts make you feel they make you look buff. <laughs> so that's why they, they cut underneath. the. You know, got, got that. I that don't give fit. any I don't give anybody anything I wouldn't wear. <laughs> and man, I nah, and um, what was that thing we did? Um, I came over the first time I came to the office. One of your shows, I think. One of the Miss UL. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. We bought some VIP passes. Yes. And gave them away. Yes, man. You always been supportive. So keep doing what you're doing, man. And I just, you know, I want to see your numbers grow. But the information you're giving people is really awesome, bro. And just being a, it's cool to be able to talk to a, to know an attorney that you could actually like talk to, talk to, yeah. you know, that back in the day, your attorney was like, oh, right. Oh, the suit, the yeah, suit behind yeah, the desk. Who's this dude? But yeah. it's cool, man. I even picked up, I, I, um, I even picked up on some of your running tips too. So like just low key, like I just don't lose the butt, bro. I'm hey, telling man, you, you gotta hey, watch out for that. Hey, when, when my wife gonna see this, she gonna be like, you better not. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, thank you for being an awesome human being, an ambassador in the community, your philanthropy work. And my friend, thank, thank you, my, my brother. Man. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Hey, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe to the podcast and leave us a five-star review. It helps keep the show free and it helps us book better guests to provide more valuable content to you. None of the opinions expressed by my guests are that of my own and nothing we talked about creates an attorney-client relationship or could be construed as legal advice. Hope you enjoy the show. This podcast is powered by Acadiana Cast Network. Go to AcadianaCast.com for more South Louisiana source content.